him, which is kind of surprising to see. I mean, normally players who are performing as well as I've seen from him so far have quite a bit of experience, but he's actually got zero Hearthstone Championship Tour points, which is a big deal for him. I mean, if he wins this event, he is qualified for the Spring Preliminary. Yep. Um, I believe he is one of the players from one. No, no, he's, he's a local, actually. But uh, the French community does that a lot, where they don't actually get to legend. They just enter practice, and they get really good. And we've seen that from some of the other players in this tournament that would not have great ladder performance, but they practice so much together, they get really strong. Yeah, I'm going to lead off with Tunnel Trog. That's one of those strong starts from Shaman when you have that totem going along with it. And Fireman, not a lot of action to really handle these couple early turns. I mean, this is a clunky hand. It is also a little rough for the Shaman because you want to play Totem, but then you can't play it three next turn. And uh, of course we see Cleef in the hand from Firebat, and I think that's gotta be one of the strongest road cards since the nerf of Silence and Big Game Hunter. You can almost always throw out a giant Cleef and it will stick to the board, and you can yeah. win the game off of that. Looks like it's gonna be a 4-4 Van Cleef here just to try to fight back on board. And with a hand like this, I don't really blame him. I mean, he can follow with Shadow Strike to take out some key threats. Yep. Hammer joins the party. That's tough now. Yeah, he's gonna just gonna save the rock fighter. Ropes uh, have almost no way to heal with this expansion, so. And Taunt Totem is that's huge. Looking mighty good right now. I imagine this is gonna be Shadow Strike or maybe a Sap in some form here. Yeah, I like the Shadow Strike on the Totem Golem this turn probably, and then you can take your pick next turn. But uh, Rogues are struggling a lot against Shaman just because they don't have any way to heal this expansion. With removal of Healbot, they have really only the Earth and Ring Pars here. So that consistent face damage is tough to stop. Yeah. Definitely been a, a little bit of a struggle here for some of these uh, rogues is just the inability to really stabilize the board. Like they've had tons of answers to everything, yep. but not really ways to come back from these dangerous board states where they're very vulnerable to burst. And I mean, just on turn four alone, Second tunnel trog. Firebats is going to be dropped to what looks like about 18 here. I mean, Dark Gamer does have option to use Rock Fighter to take out this Van Cleef and try to protect this totem goal a bit longer. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, with with I mean, with Doomhammer in hand, Rock yeah. Fighter looks so appealing to hold on to. So this is one of those turns he needs to weigh all of his. Know, is how his next turns pan out and figure out which one nets him the most damage. I really like seeing the Conceal Rogue style come into play more now. I feel like that's a really fun style where we hadn't seen it for a long time. We were seeing Malagos Rogue, um, just the standard Oil Rogues with Blade Flurry. But now without that ability to clear, Rogues are realizing they need to stealth their creatures and set up that proper turn. It feels much more roguish. Yeah. You know, you're sneaking it in there and doing something your opponent can't stop. And I love to see that happen. I personally am a big fan of the more minion-centric style. Rogue builds. The Death Rattle stuff? Yeah, oh, just, just minions in general, but specifically the Death Rattle. Love the identity it's built. Alright, yeah. we're gonna go ahead and sap here to try and deny as much damage as possible. We're down to 18 and really no few utility spells in hand. This is still gonna quickly pile up, and if you add Doomhammer on top of this, over the next four turns, this is gonna deal 16 points of damage. Well, uh, there is the heal picked up by Firebat, which is basically all he can hope for in this position, is a little bit extra life to buy some time. It's funny how fast we saw that Doomhammer play, because of course he did have other options. He could have played Trog with Totem Golem, yeah. built a board, but that was not on his mind at all. Such a powerful option. Use of Sergeant, so definitely one of the more aggressive Shaman lists. A lot of Shamans have cut the uh, four mana 7-7. Seven, seven. It was one of the newly released cards in favor of these earlier tools just to stack up the pressure like a PC Sergeant. Yeah, it's going to take out this Blood Mage, the threat of uh, Banna Knives, maybe looming a bit too much. Yep. I think any time Firebat's minions absorb an attack here, he's going to be pretty happy with it. It's still going to take quite a while for the Shaman to kill the Rogue. Even if he hits Lava Burst to face, it would be more attacks than the Doomhammer can provide, so he needs to find some other damage as long as the board got cleared. Uh, can be pretty consistently cleared with the SI agent on the 3 2 here. So yeah. Looks like it's going to be options. Shiv attack, Earth and Ring into Tunnel Trog and SI 7 agent to kind of mop this board up a bit. He can even squeeze the cold blood in, or he could choose to conceal if he wants. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of what I'm looking at too is that Firebat's got to, you know, under this much pressure, he's got to find a way to start ending this game too. I guess because you're trading on the Trog, you might consider the conceal instead. And since the cold blood won't be going face this turn, there's no advantage to playing it now. Still weighing all his options. I mean, it looks best to me. I think he was considering the cold blood face, but again, I don't think he can afford to take any more damage than he 
has to. He's gonna conceal. I don't mind this. I mean, this is setting up some pretty nice looking turns for him. Yeah, with the Shaman still at 29, oh, it's probably geez. about three turn. So that Lightning Bolt gives him That's 16. Uh, lethal next turn. Yeah, Yeah, this is, I mean, I believe Fireman only has one copy of Earth and Farsi in here as well. Yep, I'm not sure if there's any draw that will allow the Rogue to survive here. Even with a Salsi deckhand, it's not enough damage. So he's going to fight back here, but this is going to be a demise. I mean, yep. Dark Gambit and the Doomhammer. That first pick makes a huge difference as well, like not only on the mental victory, but getting one of the classes um, out of the way gives you better choices for your next match. Of course, Shaman is pretty favorable, so I think Firebat probably didn't expect to beat this deck, and he'll be all right taking his first loss anyways. Yeah, I mean, Rogue has not had the best win rate versus Shaman. It's about 42% this far in the tournament. Firebat doing the work he can, but Dark Gammon and the burn of the Doomhammer, <laughs> the leader of all the Shaman builds, is going to take game number one and set him off to an early lead. Lavaverse, definitely a good pickup as well, but uh, a lot of Shamans are not playing. It's more of the face style, but clearly it's successful against something that can't heal. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very powerful spell just to provide reach from hand. One zero lead's gotta be feeling good. Yeah, it feels good to win that one, especially it gets the nerves out of the way, right? I think if Firebat won the first game, it would be a lot harder on Dark Gammon to feel that nervousness of, oh no, I lost, this this is harder, but yeah. to have the less experienced player take the first one is gonna be a lot more consistent for him. I'm gonna look at Firebat, usually typically on phase. I think he's thinking about, could I have killed him? Should was I have just cold-blooded? Yeah, I don't think there was any way he could have won that. Yeah. His plays looked really good to me, but... Uh, yeah, just struggling with the early utility. I mean, taking 12 damage from minions that are just played on turn one and turn two. Yep. It's a lot of damage to take early on. I mean, typically Rogue wants to operate with, like, Backstab, SI7 Agent, yep. maybe a Prep and a Sap or a Prep Eviscerate, but just none of those tools available. Yeah. The Tunnel Trog is such a strong early creature, right? It's the it's the same with the Temple Mage as well with Mana Worm. When you get that one drop, oh, it changes the whole game. <laughs> Suddenly you can spiral out of control, <laughs> you have the extra damage. Mana Worm is kind of that key that unlocks the door to Mage Paradise. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's Trog very well put. It's <laughs> very much in that same vein. So Firebat's still working with Rogue, Warrior, and Mage. And Dark Ammon got to pick up a win with Rogue and Warlock. This is Conquest. So players need to win one game with each of the decks they've brought in order to be victorious in the series. And that's sort of a big deal coming into uh, such a new format. I mean, players have less than a week to prepare. So to yep. be able to find three pretty well-rounded decks is, you know, it's pretty impressive for these players thus far. Yeah, definitely. And we can see which ones come to the top, right? Both of them playing Rogue. It seems like Rogue has done really well in this tournament so far. Do you know if there's a big difference between Dark Ammon's Rogue and Firebat's Rogue? Um, Firebat, I believe, is the only player running the Salsi Cold Blood Baseless. Okay. Um, Dark Ammon's looked like it was you know, in some of the road games he's had, he said, looks like he's had some trouble closing. You know, he's been able to draw his entire deck, but not really been able to stick damage on board and really get the job done. Uh, but it is going to be Sue versus Freeze Mage. Wow. And this is one you were talking about at the beginning of this match. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to play against as Freeze Mage. You would be so happy to have received this matchup now. Um, I imagine Dark Gaming knew that Firebat would be targeting Zoo, so he was hoping to sneak it in on that second game and, and just catch Firebat in an awkward position. But it didn't happen here. Well, I guess you have the stats, actually. What are the... Uh... Yeah, so Mage versus Warlock has been actually 58% overall. Huh. Not, that, not as good as I would have expected, actually. 58% is pretty good. That's, that's pretty a, good. That's a lot. With Mad Scientist, I think it would be, uh, <laughs> be closer to 70. <laughs> it's about closer to 65, Mark. Fireman actually mentioned that he didn't think that the loss of Mad Scientist was that big of a deal. I think uh, with the fact that Doomsayer is so much more effective now is pretty huge. Looking at Direwolf Alpha, Direwolf Alpha, power overwhelming, would keep some of this power on board, but seven damage would need to be invested into that Doomsayer. He could have also tapped there, just power overwhelming, the Peddler would have killed it as well. Yep, so is going to overkill it uh, by two damage, but this preserves a 2-2 two -two on board instead of a 1-1. One -one. So maybe a big deal there, Forgotten Torch, of course, uh, one of the tools that mages are definitely favoring since yeah. that Mad Scientist rotation, and even prior to that. Um, and I think Forgotten Torch will be even more popular as the um, like slower decks come into the meta. Right now we see a lot of aggressive decks because they're easier to design right after an expansion has been released. You know they'll be consistent, but there are a lot of control decks out there that look like they could be pretty successful, and that Torch is the perfect tool. So Card draws the name of the game for Firebat. It's 
a lot of loot departures and novice engineers. His hand's actually really crummy right now for Firebat, but we assume he picks up some kind of method to deal with the board. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of damage, but not, I mean, not really anywhere to put the damage right now. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the premier plays that Freeze Mage has versus these aggressive builds is crossing up a Doomsayer. Yep. We've already seen him use a Doomsayer. Which is a big loss to not have that have cleared. Yeah, and he doesn't have a crossing up in hand right now, so he is nowhere near assembling that combo unless he just gets super good draws. And with Imkank Boss at the board, he's going to trade on that loot corner to try to preserve minion health. That's certainly a welcome draw. He was uh, just going to add a 1-1 to very board. Very sad Forbidden Ritual. <laughs> uh, or card draw for Firebat. Well, he's still safe. There's not that much power on the board. But uh, next turn, he really has to react to something. I think if he was to draw here and then try to play Emperor next turn, he could very well die to that. So yeah. he's really hoping to find a tool soon. Or he could choose to draw and maybe Frostbolt one of the creatures this turn. Yeah, I think it's what he's thinking about, too. I mean... You know, you look at this turn and you maybe just go, oh, Novice Engineer, Arcane Intellect. But yep. he's taking this time to calculate what the next couple of turns are going to look like. Do I need the Frostbolt now to preserve that life total? Yep. This is also one of the things that really sets a Freeze Mage, uh, a good Freeze Mage, like Firebat, apart from someone who just plays it uh, on a casual level. Thinking about what his next draws could be and what an ideal situation would be really gives you extra tools. Yeah, look at this. Even going to double Frostbolt to take care of damage. This does pull... Uh, six damage off the board. Yep. And that's a considerable amount. I mean, you just saw your opponent play Forbidden Ritual for one. You have to be thinking to yourself, what on earth is going on? <laughs> this is a really nice Gormok. Yeah. Fits perfectly on the curve, put some face damage in. Now, anytime you can connect for four with Gormok, it's got to feel good. But down to 15. I mean, this is... Yeah, that is not what Firebat wanted. I'm pretty sure he wanted to play Emperor here. He wanted to soften up that board last turn so there was low damage so that he could slam an Emperor down, and now he can't do that. Yep. He's facing down 12 on board, so Ice Barrier kind of pad his life total a little bit. It looks like he's even going to try to ping off this board. I'm a little bit surprised by the uh, ping instead of the draw, but yeah, looking for well. bigger turns. Even Ice Lance comes out to buy himself some more time. Okay, so he can top deck Blizzard next turn, and that's totally fine. Oh, or he can draw geez. into a Frost Nova, but he's running out of options to actually deal with this properly. Yeah, the Sea Giant added down. I mean, this is going to demand attention and very yeah. quick. And that Ice Lance was used on a 4-4, and now there's an 8-8, and you feel, oh man, probably should have saved it for the 8-8. It's going to be a matter of these next couple draws. Forgotten Torch is no help right now. He has to draw Frost Nova off this, or I, I think potentially so. another Ice Barrier. Okay. Ice Lance uh, could be some help. So you no, freeze I, the Giant, there's 12 on the board. Yeah, I'm kind of liking the Accolade here. I mean, you can die to a, a string of draws in this situation. So he's just got a Forgotten Torch to peel more damage off. Right. Next turn, he can get two draws to draw into the Blizzard with the Novice, and he'll still have enough mana left. Which is pretty good. Knife Jugglers, make it two. <laughs> uh, now, with those two Knife Jugglers, that would fill up Dark Gamut's board. Yes. And I'm not sure he needs that much pressure right now. I mean, he's seen that Firebit has an AoE. He yes. hasn't cast a Frost Nova. Like, is this enough on board? He's down two Frost Bolts. He's down both Ice Lances. If, say, in the worst case scenario, Firebat rips Blizzard, Blizzard's here. You could reload with two knife jugglers instead. Yes. That may be something he's eyeing right now. I think there's definitely no way that you would play both of them. If you play both of them, your board is full, and then if you draw a Doom Guard, you can't use it, and that would be terrible. Uh, you could consider playing one, but yeah, it looks like he has to kill your stuff. That is a welcome draw right Ooh. now. Just what you needed. This might turn the game around, honestly. Oh, I'm surprised he doesn't novice there. I think I like the Ackle. Just wanted to make sure he can get three draws to that as soon as possible. Yep. And the, Ac the Novice Engineer in a pinch is always going to draw a card for two mana. Still just drawing card draw. I mean, he's got card draw in play now, so we assume a Blizzard shows up, but the clock's starting to run out. He has no ice block up. I mean, one turn of no answer is immediate death. We'll be able to draw at least three cards next turn, but I mean, if he's got to spend four mana to do that, that means no Blizzard. So there's no way you could kill him here. The only lethal would be like a Leroy power bombing or Doom Guard power bombing, and then you can't have that tapped into. Yeah. So the other thing Dark Gamut must be thinking about is, you know, if, do I need to tap? Like, is there a chance if I just stay at 28 that this is enough pressure? Wow. wow. Four goes the tap. Okay. Fireman picks up Ice Block. He could this play could get 
really dangerous for Dark Gambit. There's a long way to go on that Warlock's HP. I mean, to not even tap there is pretty strange. At 28, you're really safe. Your opponent's yeah. struggling just to deal with the board. Fireball. I don't know if this is going to be enough. Uh, no. He has to pick his Acolyte, I guess. Draw another Frost Nova. He has a 1 in 11 to draw Frost Nova. Otherwise, he plays the block and hopes he gets an answer next turn. But the jugglers have a very high chance to mess him up after he's at one health. Yeah, I'm trying to, trying to look at some situations where you know, maybe he just ends up drawing enough cards that he can find a way out of this. But he's got to start getting the damage through. And when Dark Gaiman decides that he's not going to life tap, that extra damage is going to be hard to find. I think in Firebat's position, the fact that he didn't life tap as well gives you a read that's not actually true. You might think, like, he didn't tap because he has damage, and he knows he's ready to kill me. But, in fact, he doesn't. He just has normal creatures and didn't want to tap. Acolyte Ice blocks the play, so free to pop that is Dark Gamut. Second possessed villager. I mean, not really any help in the hand, but he's got plenty of help on board. <laughs> doesn't need to play anything this turn. Yeah, I mean... Here's the first one. Run over this Acolyte so you can't get more draws. Just pick apart the board. Okay, that's a good draw. I think it's a little too late. So you need a way to clear and then have a block up. And then he would pop you, but he wouldn't have much stuff and your Alex Strat would save you. Yeah, well, there's a blizzard. So a block with the blizzard would be pretty good. Okay, so Frost Nova Emperor, maybe. Uh, if he Frost Nova, there's no way to deal damage now that the board's full. If you Blizzard, uh, you might in fact die from the Pillager, because the Pillager was played before Juggler, so it gets juggled. Not sure exactly how that's going to work. Seems like Emperor Frost Nova. I don't think there's any other play that would. Well, he needs a big discount here, because I think something he's hunting for is being able to play Alex Straza and Ice Block in one turn. But he's got no card draw left, so this is going to require some pretty perfect draws from Firebat. But I think starting with Frost Nova, I mean, that's going to lock out Dark Game its entire turn. Yeah. I think you're just considering like what you could actually draw to save you from this situation, and I'm trying to think of it, but I'm not sure what he can draw to save you from this situation. Well, second Ice Block would help a bit. Another Fro no, He's down both Frost Novas at this point as well. Dark Hammer just instantly passes the turn. Well, that could be huge. Uh, yeah, that actually could be a really big deal right now. So there is the juggle potential. So um, you play the Doomsayer first? Yeah, you play the Doomsayer first. Okay. But even next turn, I mean, you could juggle face with that remaining juggler, which... I wonder. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so he's aware. He doesn't want to take the chance that the one juggle from the Pillager would kill him after he blizzards. So he's going to make sure that he takes that out. Because if he can clear this board and then he Alex's next turn, so that is pretty much a game win. The Warlock will have nothing in play. You'll have an 8-8 and you'll be at 15 health again. And Dark Gambit's foregone the life taps for quite a while. Doesn't look like he's going to Doomsayer. Just connect for oh. five. Okay. Ooh. This is getting... It's making it much more likely he juggles face now. This is getting dangerous. Dark Gambit loads up the juggler right now. And he's got opportunities to do it. Oh, yeah. At least three tries. That's going to do it. <laughs> that juggle from Dark Gammon is going to lock up game number two. That was two really nicely here. played. Yeah, I mean, the fact that he didn't life tap meant that there was like almost no possible way that Firebat could actually reach him. Yeah. And the fact that he drew both the knife jugglers meant that he could just slow down the pace and rely on the knife jugglers to deal that final damage in a situation like that. Yep. I mean, otherwise... You know, how much charge damage is he really going to need in that, in, on that board stand? I mean, he saw Firebat struggle to answer the board turn after turn, uh, and just having to expend so many resources that Dark Hammond just felt way ahead, even though he wasn't drawing extra cards. Yeah, it's interesting when you think about the life tap, because Firebat did have basically just face damage in his hand. He had Pyroblast, he had a Torch, and a Fireball. So if you had tapped to maybe 24, and then there was a second block, he actually could have killed you that way. But at 28, there was no way he could reach him. Yeah. So he just sat there and waited for the moment. Yeah, so... He's got Rogue to do it with, and wow. he said that this is one of his favorite decks. So, Firebat has to 3-0 the Rogue, and you said it was a bit more of a board control Rogue than Firebat had. So I have to feel like yeah. in the mirror match, at least, Firebat's Rogue will probably be favored. Because Rogues uh, do not defend themselves well, so normally the one with more damage is going to win. Yeah. 
Freeze Mage against Rogue tends to be pretty strong. And yep. up to this could point, either Mage way. has had a 69% win rate versus Rogue That's overall. Good. And Warrior has had a 64% win rate versus Rogue overall. So, you know, definitely an advantage for Dark Gammon, but not quite out of the water yet. Game number three, playing for his tournament life. Firebat has to win three straight or his run comes to an end right here. Yep. I think letting that zoo get by felt really terrible for Firebat. That's what his whole lineup is meant to be. So uh, having that escape you, you know immediately that your advantage is going to be much less than it was. Definitely still looking pretty strong versus Rogue, though. And three in a row. <laughs> three in a row is going to be tough. Yeah, but like I said, Dark Gaming with the Tomb Pillagers, it felt like he's had a little bit of trouble closing some of the games. He's drawn his entire deck a lot. Yep. But not quite the burst damage from hand when you don't have Blade Flurry and when you don't have the charge damage. I feel like this matchup, this Freeze Mage versus Rogue, used to be much more close with Lothep. Yeah. Lothep giving you that lockout turn, suddenly you could put the Mage in a situation they couldn't respond. But without that, it feels like they always have a tool to survive, and then they just end up killing you with an Alex Trouser burst. You can kind of see right here, Dark Ammon valuing wow. his life total very highly, wow. and also attacking with his uh, with his dagger. Oh, he is not going to attack this dagger. Interesting. I saw the arrow, looked like he was going to go for it. Firebat so. just going to keep drawing cards. The reason to not attack with the dagger there is he has the three, four, five curve, so he would never be able to re-dagger yeah. until six. So he would probably start attacking next turn. Just go ahead and cycle. Uh, it's looking like a ice block, not too bad of a development here. You have the novice engineer that turn as well, or even the doomsayer is not so bad. Ropes very consistently have a four mana play. Yeah, I think very often this matchup, Frost Nova Doomsayer uh, can pull some big weight in the face of no sap. Yeah, rogues have one of the better ways to stop it, but then you have more freezes than Doomsayer, so you tend to just freeze and play it again yeah. if they sap it. So he's going to play Doomsayer here, and this is one of those really awkward spots where, you know, putting damage into a Doomsayer feels good, but I think Firebat's totally okay with this. I mean, the second copy back behind, you know, still at effectively 38 with that Ice Barrier. Yep. If he picks up some card draw, he's going to be looking really good. I like to think of the Doomsayer in that situation, like an Ice Barrier that was 7 instead of 8, and it only cost 2 mana. It's definitely a good way to look at it. I mean, very often when you see that card used just for life. and buy yourself some time. Ooh, this is a big turn <laughs> for Dark Gambit. Gadgetsy and Auctioneer, coin, conceal. Oh. And it's it's right on that perfect turn before Flame Strike. Firebat has the Flame Strike, which is the ultimate clear of this, but it's turn 6, and you can't use it. I'm having some flashbacks here. This yeah. Is this one's rough to look at. This is the pre nax days. <laughs> they used to have a turn five. <laughs> they didn't have a free coin, though. <laughs> Their four <laughs> drop didn't give them a coin. Oh, this is brutal. You could just play the Doomsayer on its own, but you have a freeze with it, too. If it's going to play the Doomsayer, it says that Flame Strike Blizzard is enough to clear up the board states. This is actually going to unlock Backstab yeah. very easily for Dark Gammon as well. He's going to lead with Deadly Poison. But buckle it, boys. There are a lot of card draws coming this cha -ching, turn. Cha-ching, cha-ching. I do love that sound the auctioneer makes. <laughs> He's got the best deals anywhere. <laughs> Second conceal. Oh, so the prep's picked up. It's just getting insane now. Now, the thing about it is you just mentioned it. it Firebat's got Flame Strike behind. Yep. So if Dark Gammon commits a lot to the board this turn, sure, Firebat's going to take some damage. But again, he's at 38 right now. Yep. The Doomsayer's going to have to be handled. And the flame strike is coming. I mean, this could be a major stabilizing point. I think the beauty of the situation for the rogue is you want to cast spells, so then you're not playing anything into flame strike. Blood mage and eviscerate. I'm gonna clean this up and second conceal behind this. I mean, this will draw flame strike, I believe. Yeah, yeah. So he saves the prep. He could have prepped the eviscerate before and just drawn an extra card, but he picked up the other auctioneer, so I guess he saves it for that one. 27 can seal. I'm sorry, maybe he didn't attack with a dagger. We'll see. So Zarl showing up for the rogue. I really like that card. This is one of the new legendary cards. It is a 4 mana 3 2 that gives you two 1 mana spells over the course of its life. Yep. A couple of different utility abilities available. Yep. Among those, there's a 1 cost shadow step, there's a 1 cost stealth. Uh, this deal damage, this yep. buff attack. It's a very functional card. I like it a lot for rogues. So, just going to add more pressure to the board. Firebat's got this Emperor, but... Oh. 
that's certainly a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of options. Emperor, but looks like that Blizzard wants to just start chipping away at these minions a bit more. Buy himself some more time. I mean, this isn't the greatest Emperor hand I've ever seen. I mean, I imagine he's looking for a little bit more value here, as well as maybe coupling it with the Frost Emma next turn. I don't think you really need the Emperor in this match, to be honest. You just wait for the Alex Straza. So you use the Emperor as like a, uh, a tool to make the Rose react to it, because they can't really let it sit there, but it's also not going to win you the whole game on its own. Yeah, 22. No lead dagger here. But he picks up nothing next turn. He has only damage in hand, assuming the Emperor Frost Nova, which looks pretty good. Yeah. I mean... You might start thinking about just killing the creatures, because you will be really behind without an awesome top deck. It's looking like it's what he's eyeing right now. Yep. You know, we've seen this strategy be pretty successful, too, where the mage just quite literally kills every minion. Yeah that the road plays, and they don't have the reach at the end of the game. I mean, without a charge minion in the deck, Dark Gamut can't activate Cold Blood very well. Yep. So Fire Bat just kills everything. He's in pretty good shape, but that's a lot of work to do. And the Rogue also fatigues so quickly. Like, we can see there's six cards left. That Auctioneer drew, I don't know, seven cards or something on the yeah. turn that he played it. <laughs> you immediately cut through your deck, uh, making it much more appealing to kill stuff. I, mean, I think a great turn here was Fireball, Frostbolt, the Drake, and torch the 3-3, three, three, and then you can cure a power of the wounded Drake next turn. Yeah, I think he wants this Emperor on board to discount these effects, so that way he can handle everything a little bit better. Not only that, but this also potentially threatens some, some AoE. Yes. So Dark Gambit may be a little bit reluctant to develop back behind here. Yeah, I totally agree. In, in this situation, it feels so bad to play creature. Although this is where Zarl is amazing, right? We get the death rattle from damage from that effect. Deadly poison and four to base. I mean, the damage is starting to add up. Yeah. Still no secrets. No secrets at all. Oh, well, he had one barrier, actually. Yeah. yeah he had a barrier. Poor damage because that spell power as well. Double spell power. 15's a dangerous life total. Blood Mage looks like a pretty welcome draw right now. Really? He has nothing. <laughs> well, he gets he to kill the Azure there. Drakes yeah. with, with the rest of his spells at this point. I feel like a Blizzard would have been really sweet. Although he played one already. All right, time to take care of some creatures. Seems like he can remove everything this turn. I mean, this is under a big threat, though. And it feels really bad for us holding his arrow. Yeah, it does. Oh, you'll actually or have to fireball fireball yeah. drink bars here. So do you leave the Zarl in play? It gives uh, him a cold blood target. I think that works against his game plan right now, which is... Keep minions off the board so you can't cold blood. Yep. Yeah. Given we can see the rogue's hand, that's a pretty good strategy right now. There's a shiv. Four cards. Blood mage. Going to three. Right, they make bars here. I get the best deal. Here we go. More card draws. Or maybe just going to play auctioneer and hope this gets burned. I mean, there's a point where you can draw too many cards the rogue. Oh, yeah. It's funny to have both those preps sitting in his hand still. There's almost no way he can use them in this matchup now. Well, his hand is completely playable each turn. Now, this is looking like... I mean, Firebat's going to have to Ice Lance his auction here, I think. Yeah. You do get the Acolyte to build up. What's kind of funny is if Firebat could just keep the Auctioneer frozen for yeah. long enough, it's you actually kind spells. of a threat to Dark Gambit. <laughs> yeah, he can't play any spells right now because he doesn't want to fatigue. Number of cards left in deck, very relevant for Dark Game at this point. Two cards. That's down to one card now. I'm almost out of cards. I'll tell you what, if Fire Bat picks up a freeze effect here, he's going to be looking really good. Yep. There's still a decent number of creatures from Dark Game. And there's what? The Eviscerate plus the SI for six burst in hand. It's half of Fire Bat's health that he can do right now. I mean, Fire Bat needs to draw something right now. He basically has to get a board freeze. And again, it's very difficult for Dark Gamma to cast any spells right now with one card left. I mean, if he takes too much fatigue damage, this one could easily end. So he's just going to continue to chip away. Okay, so Firebat fire gets two pickups here. Any freeze is amazing. Um, if he picks up two damage spells, he should be fine. He clears off two creatures. He's a 3-3. Three, three. He's not quite dead. He's got to be fearing that cold blood. I mean, he knows that cold blood's in his build. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This guy's tough. Yeah, maybe gonna use that uh that toxin to return wow. it to the hand. Just any damage he can grab right now, but that draws him a card. Ship is damage. I mean it draws a card, but he's still at 29. You need to deal face damage. There's an ice lance. I mean right. I wonder if Pyroblast Ice Lance could be a play here. That actually looks pretty good. Pyroblasting a 4-4. Looks like uh I think it's called for an admin. Figure 
what that is. It's called something like Android Fire Bat. Um, I mean, this is a pyroblastic at 5-4 does not feel good, hot form. You have to make the decision first, too. If you hear a power, this is when you really need to know what's left in your deck. If you want to hear a power of that Acolyte to get an extra draw, you're at least going to trade it and get one. I think he's pyroblastic. Well, shouldn't you at least trade the Acolyte and see what you get? I don't think he wants to trade right now. I think he wants to try to get more draws later on. Yeah. yeah. That Pyroblast heads in that 5-4, <laughs> and we're Ice Lance and that Gadget's and Auctioneer. Uh, Again, this restricts the spells from Dark Gammon. I mean, he cannot play too many spells with this happening. One, two, three, four, five, six. He's got eight damage available. Wow. That's so close. Wait. No. Uh, yeah, you're right. Oh, it's this lethal, right? Or is it eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Eight, eight, yeah. No, I mean, it will set Fireman to one. I'll tell you what, Ice Block's looking like a pretty good draw right now. Okay, so he at least gets two draws. Unless he top decks Alex Straza. I'm not, you can't even play it in this position, actually. Alex Straza would be useless to you here. I mean, he's going to need extra card draw into Ice Block, into multiple things to do over the course of the next couple of turns. I know for a fact he only plays one Flame Strike. It's been used. He has a Blizzard left. That's the only AoE which is going to do damage. It was actually really hard to kill these creatures. This is, this is going to be a tough game. I mean, you can't leave the Auctioneer out forever. And, uh, yeah, he's thinking of casting a spell here, but he does take the... No, 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 no not. Oh, my. Oh, I don't agree with that play. That could be deadly. I mean... The mage was at six, and he used a four damage spell. <laughs> Arcane Intellect gets picked oh, up. Oh, that's huge. Another draw, Roaring Torch. Yeah. Two more pickups here. Novice Engineer, no help. Ice Block! Right. I don't know if this is going to be enough, though. I mean, he needs this life trouble to be stabilized. Like there's another Ice Block still. Oh, and there's Blizzard. But again, just the dagger, yeah, the dagger is going to be a major threat here. Fatigue was at two. I mean, Dark Gammon probably has six turns left until he dies with that much health. Doesn't have to play any spells this turn, so there's no risk of fatiguing more. I mean, Firebat still needs a lot of help. I think there's no freeze for the rogue space either. Both Ice Lances were freezing a creature, yep. and both Frostbolts killed the creature. Four. Important to sequence that right as well. I mean, putting Fireman at one is a big difference right now. Nice and done. I don't know if Fireback can win this game. Looking rough. Even ship from hand will take care of it. It's probably the best draw. Needs, I mean, he has to have second ice block, I guess. Raw Nova's no good. Wow. And there's no way for Fireback to stay alive. Dark Gammon gonna take this series. Three games to zero. Wow, really well played. I mean, uh, yeah.